Hello everyone, today we'll be going through IGCSC Mathematics Paper 2 Extended 0580-22 May-June 2021. Let us move to the question number 1. The probability that Jane wins a game is 7 by 10. Find the probability that Jane does not win the game. So we know that the total probability is 1 so 1 minus 7 by 10 will be equal to 3 by 10 so our answer will be 3 by 10 this will be the answer then they are saying Jane plays this game 50 times find the number of times she is expected to win the game so winning the probability is 7 by uh, 10 so we can write 7 over 10 of 50 and this will be equal to we can check this 7 over uh, uh, 10 multiplied by 50 is equal to 35. So our answer will be 35. So one more question. Then we have to calculate this by the help of calculator which is question number 2. So we can take uh, this one and fourth root of uh, 0 0.0256 and this is equal to 2 over 5 which is 0 0.4 so we can write answer as uh, 0 0.4 0 0.4 will be our answer for this one hopefully you understood this now question number 3 question 3 is stem and leaf diagram Emma has 15 mathematics questions to complete in the stem and leaf diagram shows the time in minutes it takes her to complete each question so key is two uh, like one is equal to 20 minutes and complete the table so we have to write the mode median and range mode is most occurring and we can see most occurring is basically this one which is combined with this one so it will be 16 so 16 is the mode and median is middle number so middle number of 15 will be what um, will be middle number will be uh, n plus n plus 1 by 2 which is equal to 15 plus 1 by 2 which is equal to 16 by 2 which is 8 so 8th term we will be taking so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8th term is this one so it 1 will combine with this one and it will be 11 and this will be the median and the range is maximum minus minimum maximum value is what maximum value can be 20 and minus the minimum value will be 0 3 so this will be equal to 17 so the range of this will be 17 this is three more question which we have done then write down an expression for the range of k consecutive consecutive integers so what are the consecutive integers for example conduct consecutive integers we can write 2 3 4 5 6 or something like that and uh, what will be the difference between them difference between them will be uh, between them mean maximum minus minimum so 6 minus 2 will be equal to 4 if we are taking 5 numbers we will be getting 1 less than 5 number if we will be ta taking like for example um, 9 8 9 10 for example 8 9 and 10 so 10 minus 8 will be 10 minus 8 will be 2 which is 1 less than again the number we have taken so it will be k minus 1 so num k is the number of integers number of consecutive integers which will take and minus 1 will give us the basically expression for the range of those numbers and question number 5 question number 5 says uh, Henrik draw this scatter graph put a ring around one correct statement about this graph so these are the numbers basically points and for this one we can see that this is 
this is basically negative correlation because right side is down and left side is up so it is negative correlation so our this statement it shows negative correlation will be correct then b part each of four scatter diagrams shows the same set of data a line has been drawn on each diagram so complete the statement the line in diagram is the most appropriate line of best fit so we'll have to decide which one is line of best fit and this one basically line is over here and so and marks are over here so this will not be suitable similarly this is also like this side is up this side is down so this is also not suitable and oh, most of the points are above the line so this is also not suitable so diagram c will be basically our suitable answer which we can give over here then comes question number six question number six says a rhombus has a rhombus has side length 6.5 the rhombus can be constructed by drawing two triangles use a ruler and compasses only to construct the rhombus leave in your construction arcs one diagonal of the rhombus has been drawn for you so this uh, diagonal basically they have already drawn for us now what we can do we have to take 6.5 and 6.5 and we will make arc we will put compass over here at this point and we will make an arc like this i'm making with free hand hopefully you will be getting this so and similarly we can make another arc like for example over here so by putting compass over here we can make arc over here and we can join these points this one and uh, and this one basically over here so i'll redraw basically over this will be arc and this will be arc and the point will be this will be the line joining this point so similarly we can draw uh, the lower side also we can um, one second so we can lower side also we can make arc over here and this arc will be like this one putting compass over here and the second arc also we will make like this one over here by drawing so arc over here and this will be the point which we will be joining and we will be making hopefully you understood this this is how you will be keeping arcs also and question number seven complete these statements the reciprocal of reciprocal of uh, 0.2 is what like if we check with calculator 0.2 means what it's 1 by 5 so we can write 0.2 is equal to 1 over 5 so reciprocal of 1 over 5 will be what reciprocal of 1 over 5 will be equal to 5 so we will write here 5 then a prime number between 90 and 100 prime number between 90 and 100 is 97 which is not divisible by any other number so we can write here 97 then comes uh, b part 7 by 5 0 0.6 under root 7 8 and under root 9 from the list write down and irrational number so rational numbers are the numbers which can be written in p over q format and the numbers which cannot be written in p over q format are known as the rational number so 7 under root is a rational number which cannot be written in p over q format so we can move to the question number 8 question number 8 says um, this a is equal to b square of 5c find b where when a is equal to this and c is equal to 2 so we will replace the values a is equal to 5.625 and this is equal to b squared over 5 into c which is 2 
so b squared will be equal to 10 multiplied by 5.625 and we can rewrite it as 56.25 this will be b square value and b value will be what under root of 56.25 and square root of 56.25 will be equal to 7.5 so 7.5 5 will be our our final answer to marks question then question 9 without using calculator work out this fraction um, you must show all your work and give your answer in as a fraction simplest form so 2 over 3 and division we will change uh, mixed fraction into improper fraction this part 7 ones are 7 plus 3 will be 10 so 10 over 7 now we can change this division sign into multiplication so it will be 2 by 3 multiplication reciprocal of next term will be 7 over 10 now we can cancel 2 5s are 10 and it will be 7 over 5 3s are 15 so 7 by 15 7 over 15 will be our final answer hopefully you got this as well now question number 10 um, write this in standard form so standard form we have to move the decimal after first non-zero after first non-zero digit so in between six and five so it will be taking one two three jumps so 6.54 into 10 raised to minus 3 because we are taking jump to the right so answer will be 6.5 into 10 raised to minus 3 if you are taking jumps to the left it will be positive power of the of this 10 now b part the number this one is written as an ordinary number right on the number of zeros that follow the digit 7 so we have to move this decimal after 7 so we will be taking three jumps and our new number will be what 1467 into 10 raised to the power um, 1 0 2 minus 3 and this will be 1 4 6 7 into 10 raised to power 99 so there will be 99 zeros after uh, 7 hopefully you understood this as well these are all one mark questions now question number 11 uh, we have to write this as a fraction in simplest form so we can rewrite like for example x is equal to 0 0.0404 and 04 this is basically recurring and 100x will be equal to um, 4 point we can move this uh, decimal over here and it will be 4.0404 recurring and what else we can do we can we can subtract this so we will write here x is equal to 0 0.0404 recurring and now we can subtract this will be 99 minus minus so this will be 99x is equal to 4 99x is equal to 4 this implies x is equal to 4 over 99 and 4 over 99 will be our final answer one more question question number 12 universal set or uh, domain or uh, universal set is integers greater than 2 a is a prime number what are the prime numbers we can write prime numbers are 3 5 7 11 13 and so on similarly odd numbers odd numbers are what odd numbers are 3 5 7 9 11 and so on similarly square numbers square numbers are 2 square uh, 9 then uh, will be 16 and 25 and so on these are square numbers then they are saying after this one they are saying describe the type of numbers in the set b complement intersection c b complement mean it should not be in B and common with C. So those will be e even numbers and not odd. It means square numbers. So even square numbers. Even square numbers. 
will be this one then complete the uh, the set labels on the Venn diagram so we have to complete this one so we can see this is uh, our uh, universal set then a is prime numbers and prime numbers are basically inside odd numbers so it will be a a will be over here we can write a over here and b will be this one and c will be over here and next is b part which is saying shade the region shade the region d complement d complement union e intersection f complement so to understand this one what we will do i will i will take um, i will take the picture and i will copy here and we can use this picture for our understanding i have taken the same picture and i will be placing here and one more times i will keep this picture over here and i will be reducing and placing here in front of you now what we will be doing we will be basically understanding the steps and first of all d complement d complement i will show d complement this will be d complement d complement means not in d not in d are uh, D is this one so not in D will be outside region of D whatever not in D not in D we can shade like this so this is all not in D I'm shading the part which is D complement hopefully you will be understanding everything and don't forget to subscribe the channel and also press bell icon so that you will be getting notification for incoming videos also recommend this channel to your friends and class fellows and introduce this channel to your friend uh, to your teachers respective teachers basically and this will be d complement now after drawing this d complement we will draw e union e union f e union f uh, basically a e intersection f complement what is a intersection f a uh, e intersection f e intersection f is basically this region but they are asking for complement of this region so complement of this region if will be shading then complement will be outer region of this one and we can shade the complement like this one so i will remove the inner shading this one and we can shade the outer region like this so this will be the second portion and we can hopefully you will better understand why this when you break into two steps it's it's easier in case of venn diagram these type of questions if you will be breaking them in two steps then you will be better understanding and there will be no ambiguity also so this is basically the part which is what e intersection f complement so we have drawn these two separately now we have to take union union means what union means whatever shaded in any of these two diagrams that we will be including now we will be including the shading whatever shaded in any of the drawings if you see only this portion is not shaded in both only this portion is not shaded in both the rest of everything is shaded in one of them either first drawing or second drawing so in union we are taking uh, union means uh, without repetition we are taking all the uh, parts so we will be 
including all shaded parts in any of those two drawings so this white portion which i'm leaving is unshaded in both of these drawings so hopefully no it's better we spent two minutes but uh, we you know, hopefully you understood better this one for your other practice questions also now basically this is our answer you can this is all working part which i have done for you if you if you can directly write this answer then basically this answer is required the rest of the things are just explanation for you now we can move to the question number 13 question number 13 says what question number 13 says diagram is not to scale a b c are points on the circle center o d a and d c are tangents and tangents of this on the circle basically tangents are equal to each other and a d c is 44 work out the value of x so to better understand this one basically what we will do we will split into two triangles like this and this will be 22 and this one we know this is 90 degree we are considering basically this triangle so in this triangle you can understand this angle will be how much this angle will be 90 minus uh, this is 22 basically so 90 minus 22 will be 68 and this will also be 68 degrees and this x will be half of the 68 uh, ha this uh, half of this center this one this circle so this will be 68 degrees hopefully you understood this also so 68 we can mention over here working i have explained over in the drawing so question number 14 question number 14 says the diagram shows a trapezium the trapezium has one line of symmetry work out area of the trapezium so what we can do we can share we can basically draw a line and this one and this is 15.4 so this will also be for 15.4 centimeters and we can now consider basically this triangle and we need to find the base of this triangle because the additional line length we need to find and what we will do we will label the drawing a b c d e and f so that so that we can refer it and f e basically this length is same as the above one so we have written this one as 15.4 we need to find this length ed and af are same length so we will find af so we will write in triangle in triangle abf um, b bf over bf over af is equal to tan of 62 degrees tan of 62 degrees mean what bf is bf is given which is 18.2 and af we need to find is equal to tan of 62 degrees this implies af is equal to 18.2 over tan of 62 degrees and this will be calculated as 18.2 over tan of 62 degrees is equal to 9.677 9.677 so this length is 9.677 and this is also 9.677 now we can find the length of the base ad ad will be equal to what ad will be equal to 9.677 plus 15.4 plus 9.677 and this will be equal to what this multiply by 2 and plus this will be 15.4 is equal to 34.75 34.75 now we can find basically uh, this one what do you call area of trapezium 
so area of trapezium is equal to 1 by 2 into a plus b parallel sides into h and h is given 18.2 so we can write 1 by 2 into a one side is 15.4 and plus the other side is 34.75 which we have just calculated and multiply by 18.2 and this will be equal to we can calculate this 0 0.5 into 15.15.4 plus 34.75 and multiply by 18.2 and this is equal to how much this will be 456.365 456.365 this will be 456 will be the answer approximately rounded to 3 significant figures hopefully you understood this this was four mark question question number 15 complete the table showing information about the congruence of pairs of triangles the first two rows have been completed for you all diagrams are not to scale so these two uh, rows they have basically completed for us and they have shown this is congruent and the rule and this is not congruent and similarly if we check this one basically uh, this this is 6.5 6.5 and 7 and 7 this is 35 and 35 so two sides and angle are congruent so we will write here side angle side theorem and it will be congruent and for the next row this side is 4.5 4.5 this side is 5 5 4 4 so all three sides are equal so s s s theorem so it will be also congruent next will be this one you, you can see uh, this two sides are equal this is 35 this is 65 so remaining this angle will be uh, 25 and this angle will be 55 so these two are not equal so we'll say not congruent for this one basically not congruent and here we can write none use no theorem required for this now question number 16 question number 16 says a is the point 5 7 and b is the point 9 minus 1 find the length of AB if we can apply length formula so AB will be equal to square root of um, the x uh, y2 minus y1 so minus 1 minus 7 squared plus x2 minus x1 it means 9 minus 5 squared and this will be equal to minus 8 squared in brackets plus this will be 4 squared under root and we can find this this will be square root of uh, minus 8 squared plus 4 squared and this is equal to 4 under root 5 this can be answer or we can provide in decimal this will be 8.94 8.94 in 8.94 will be answer to three significant figures then find the equation of the line a b to find equation of the line a b what we can do first of all we will find the gradient and the, of two points and the points are this one so we can write y2 minus y1 y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and this will be minus 8 over 4 which is equal to minus 2 and gradient is minus 2 so we'll use this gradient and use any of the points i'm using this point five seven so five and seven this point we'll be using and we have equation of the line in point slow form this will be y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1 we will replace y minus y1 will be seven is equal to m value will be minus two into x minus x1 will be five now we can uh, rewrite it as y is equal to minus 2x minus 5 plus 7 so final equation will be y is equal to minus 2x plus 2 
and this will be basically we have done mistake basically not 5 this should be 10 here and this one will be this minus 2 into minus 5 will be plus 10 so this will be 17 basically plus 17 so y is equal to minus 2x plus 17 this will be our final equation which we have written over here hopefully you understood this is three marks question find the gradient of the line that is perpendicular to this line so first of all we will write this line as y is equal to mx plus c format y is equal to mx plus c format so we can write this as y is equal to 4 by 3 x minus 5 by 3 and m will be equal to this will be the m value so we can write it as 4 by 3 so gradient of the perpendicular will be equal to reciprocal and change sign so it will be minus 3 by 4 minus 3 by 4 will be our final answer for this question now we can move to question number 18 functions question f of x is given g of x is given we have to solve this equation f of g of x plus 1 is equal to g of f of x so first of all we can write g of x plus 1 so g of x is this one so we will write we will replace x by x plus 1 so it will be x plus 1 plus 4 which is equal to x plus 5 now we can write f of g of x plus 1 which will be f of x plus 5 because g of x plus 1 is x plus 5 so we can write it as x plus 5 squared minus 25 and if we open this square it will be x squared plus 25 plus 2 into 5 10x and minus 25 so minus 25 and plus 25 will be cancelled and this will be x squared plus 10x so we found f of g of x plus 1 now we can find g of f of x g of f of x and this will be equal to what f of x g of f of x will be what we will replace f of x in g of x so this will be x will be x squared minus 25 and plus 4 and this will be equal to x squared minus 21 now they are saying this is these two are equal to each other so we can equalize x squared plus 10 is equal to x squared minus 21 and we can cancel these squares and we will get 10 10 we missed x basically over here so 10x is equal to minus 21 so x will be equal to minus 21 over 10 this implies x is equal to minus 2.1 so we can write minus 2.1 or 21 over 10 this will be our final answer this was a four mark question hopefully you understood this now question number 19 uh, question number 19 diagram is provided which is not to scale 19 a part the diagram shows shape made from an equilateral triangle ABC equilateral triangle means these all three angles are equal angles are equal mean this will be 60 degree so remaining angle this one will be 300 this is the information we got so far and next they are saying point bc lies on the circle uh, circle and center a the side length of the equilateral triangle is 12.4 so this is 12.4 centimeter this is also information provided and what we have to do work out the perimeter of the shape so we will apply perimeter formula and perimeter formula is what L is equal to theta over 360 into 2 pi r. This is basically the uh, perimeter formula for this sector. So this one arc basically we will find arc length. So major arc length B to C starting from here till here we will find first. So L will be equal to what? L will be equal to theta is 300 over 360 into 2 pi and the radius is what radius is same as 12.4 because one side is 12.4 this side will also be 12.4 and this side will also be 12.4 
so we can write here 12.4 and this will be equal to what we can write on here and this will be 300 over 360 and this will be multiplied by 2 pi and multiplied by 12.4 and this is equal to 62 by 3 pi 62 by 3 pi I'm writing in terms of pi because I don't want to lose the decimals so perimeter will be what perimeter will be this length plus this length 12.4 so we will write 62 by 3 pi plus 12.4 this will be the parameter so in this one uh, we will add plus 12.4 and this will give us 77.3 77.3 up to three significant figures we got this answer hopefully you understood this now b part they're saying b part also not to scale the diagram shows two sectors of a circle two sectors of a circle one is smaller circle which is unshaded the major sector is shaded the area of the major sector is provided which is 74.5 centimeter square calculate the radius so radius we have to calculate now area of a sector formula we can apply we know area of sector is equal to what theta over 360 into pi r squared and this r value r value we don't know so area is given what we can do we can replace the values 74.5 is the area and theta is theta of the major arc is this one one uh, 360 basically 360 minus 41 and this will be equal to how much 360 minus 41 is equal to 319 319 so 319 over 360 uh, into pi and r squared r we don't have so r squared now r squared will be equal to what r squared will be equal to we can shift everything to other side so 74.5 74.5 multiply by 360 this denominator will be shifted to other side as numerator and over this will be 319 pi this will be r square and r value will be what we will take under root of this one 74.5 into 360 divided by 319 pi and we can calculate in one go this will be fraction 74.5 multiply by 360 divided by 319 and pi also and we will get 5.17 up to three significant figures so 5.17 centimeter three mark question this is done hopefully you understood this now question number 20 algebra question algebraic expression is provided we have to expand and simplify so what we will do we will first expand these two will multiply these two basically and we will get what x into 2x will be 2x squared and plus x into 5 will be 5x minus 2 into minus 2x will be minus 4x minus 2 into plus 5 will be minus 10 and bracket close and it will be x plus 3 and next is what next further we can simplify this adding like terms so 2x squared plus x minus 10 into x plus 3 now we can multiply again so it will be 2x squared into x will be 2x cubed and 2x squared plus multiply by plus 3 will be plus 6x squared x into x will be x squared and x into 3 will be plus 3x then minus 10 into x will be minus 10x and minus 10 multiply by plus 3 will be minus 30 now this is done we can again adding like terms 2x cubed and plus 7x squared and 3x minus 10x will be minus 7x and minus 30 this will be the final answer which we can provide over the specific place for answer and this is the answer three more question done now question number 21 says the force of attraction f newtons between two magnets is inversely proportional to the square of the distance d centimeter be between the magnets 
so what we can do we can write f is indirectly proportional to it means 1 over d squared like this so it means f is equal to k over d squared and they are saying what they are saying when x when d is equal to 1.5 f is equal to 48 so f is equal to 48 when d is equal to 1.5 so k over 1.5 squared so k will be equal to 48 into 1.5 squared and we can calculate this value uh, 48 multiplied by 1.5 squared and this will be equal to 108 so 108 is k value which we can replace in this so f will be equal to 108 over d square this will be basically the equation which is required they are saying they are saying find an expression for f in terms of d which we have done now the second part which is b part they are saying when the distance between the two magnets is doubled the new force is n times the original force so work out the value of n now what we will do we our equation is what our equation is f is equal to 108 over d squared now if we take d is equal to 2d and we replace in this equation f will be equal to 108 over 2d whole squared and this will be this implies f will be equal to 108 over 4d squared so it will be 1 over 4 times if you see this is 1 over 4 times so n value is 1 over 4 hopefully you understood this then comes question number 22 question number 22 says we have to basically simplify this algebraic expression so we can um, first of all we will factorize this numerator and for factorization you know we are using calculator mode 5 3 but we are providing basically the whole working we are not uh, skipping any step so coefficient of x square is 2 and coefficient of x is minus 5 and the constant value is minus 12 and this is equal to 4 and minus 3 by 2 4 and minus 3 by 2 so what we will do we will change sign and utilize these values if we use when we use 4 we will be writing x minus 4 and for this value we will be writing this denominator with x 2x and plus 3 this will be factorization and denominator we can take 3x common so inside will be x minus 4 and what else we can do we can do cancellation so this will be cancelled and remaining part we can write over here 2x plus 3 over 3x further simplification is not possible so this will be our final answer hopefully you understood this this is very easy four mark question now question number 23 find all the solutions of this one uh, 4x 4 sin x is equal to uh, 3 for range from 0 to 360 degrees so now what we will do we can draw this one first of all before drawing what we will do we will write down this equation sin x will be equal to 3 by 4 so x will be equal to sine inverse of 3 by 4 and this will be equal to what we will find the value so mode 1 and this will be shift sine of 3 over 4 and this will be equal to uh, 48.8 6 48.59 so we can write 48.6 now this is the value now we have to draw the graph so to draw the graph what we will do we can take y-axis like this one and x-axis also we can draw like this so this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis and what else we can draw sine curve I will redraw sine curve like this one now uh, 
this sine x value y value is 3 by 4 so we can show like this one a line like this so this value will be this value we will indicate as 48.6 this will be 0 this will be 180 you know one sign of 180 is 0 and 360 will be 0 and then uh, this is uh, also this one so this side this side will be 180 minus so this point will be 180 degree minus 48.6 and if we subtract 180 minus 48.6 and this will be equal to uh, sorry 180 we miss zero okay so this will be equal to 131.4 so 131.4 this point will be 131.4 and this value of y will be 3 by 4 and we can see in this area there is no other point which is up to 360 we can we can check up to 360 there is no other uh, solution for this so what will be our solution our answer will be 48.6 and 131.4 these will be basically where uh, degrees you can see so solutions between this now uh, next will be what we can remove the degree sign basically up to this one now we can uh, move to question number four question number four says solve uh, this is algebraic uh, fraction which we have to solve so what we can do we can solve uh, this side first and we can uh, write in fraction format this one what we will do we will write here x plus 1 and x plus 9 this is the easiest way we are solving so 1 multiplied by denominator of 9 which is x plus 9 plus 9 into denominator of 1 which is x plus 1 and this will be equal to 1 now we can cross multiply and open the brackets of numerator so x plus 9 plus 9 x plus 9 is equal to we will multiply and x plus 1 and x plus 9 further we can open the brackets and this will be 9x plus x will be 10x plus 18 9 plus 9 is 18 and x into x will be x squared and plus x into 9 will be 9x plus 1 into x will be x plus 1 into 9 will be 9 now further we can uh, basically shift these two terms also to the other side and we will get x squared plus this will be 10x plus 9 minus 10x minus 18 is equal to 0 so we can cancel plus 10x and minus 10x and it will be x squared minus 18 is equal to 0 and how we got 18 it should be like 8 minus 18 plus 9 so minus 9 and we can write it as x plus 3 and x minus 3 is equal to 0 this implies x is equal to 3 and x is equal to minus 3 and this will be basically the values which will provide over here 3 and minus 3 this was from 5 marks very easy question which we have done hopefully you understood each and everything and don't forget to subscribe the channel also press bell icon so that you will be getting useful videos in future as well Recommend this channel to your friends and classmates. Also introduce this channel to your respected teachers. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye.